Hello my PBC family and friends, Pastor Brian here, a quick bite, uh, living the word. So today our passage, I'm going to read us a large passage this morning and I'm not really going to expound too much on it. I just want you to hear the words. I want you to stop and actually take, you have to pause and just kind of think through each one of these phrases. I will make some comments as we go along, um, but I just want to read the entirety of the passage because I think there's something that right now the world needs to see, something the world needs to know exists is, for lack of better terms, Christians. True biblical Christians. I think the world is so uh, distracted by the other things of this life, and I think Christians are allowing ourselves to become distracted by those things too, that we're missing out on the fact that we are still supposed to be a testimony and a light in a dark world. So in Romans chapter 12, we read a list of things. I don't want to. I want to be careful here. I don't want to make these evidences of salvation, um, but I want to say that these are things that we as Christians should not only display but strive to display every day in our lives. So as we go into our day today, as we go in our day over the next weeks here, our, our, over the next weeks we go, we do our things. We should really think on these things that we're doing them. So we're gonna pick up at Romans chapter 12, verse 9, and it says. And like I mentioned, I might stop along the ways and kind of give you some thoughts along the different verses, okay? It says, let love be without dissimulation. That literally means to be sincere. That's the point. Love sincerely. Love people sincerely. We don't love sin, which is why it goes on and says, abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. I mean, think about that cleaving, just grabbing on, not letting go like a child to their parent. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. That means being on fire. That fervent, that fervency is burning up in you. The spirit wanting to get out and do. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. There's a big one for us right now, huh? Imagine if we start exercising the patience with everything we're facing. Continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Brothers and sisters, that's a big one. I have a feeling it might be even a bigger one in the coming days. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that do weep. And that's another big one. I'm amazed by how many times I've heard even from Christians' mouths during this time when somebody has lost somebody to this pandemic or even just lost somebody at all that they attributed to the pandemic. Well, it real? Was it not real? Does it matter? It's still a loss. Why aren't we weeping with them anymore? Why aren't we sad over the loss of life anymore? Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not the high thing, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. I think that's partly why we're not being kindly affectionate, why we're not weeping with them that are weeping. Why? Because why? We're not being kindly and affectionate. We're wise, we're not, and, we're, and we're wise in our own conceits. We think we know more than God because God brought us to this time. God brought us to this season. God counted you faithful to put you in this season. Recompense to no man evil for evil. No man. And if you're into underlining your Bible, I recommend you underline that. Recompense to no man. It doesn't say recompense no, to, no, to nobody you agree with evil for evil. No man. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If possible, as much as lieth, with, as lieth in you, live peaceably with, there it is again, all men. We know there are times in life when it's impossible. But we, don't, we want to make sure that impossibility is not because of our own stubborn and rebellious hearts. De Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place under wrath. For it is written, here it is, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Vengeance isn't ours. It's not our place to get retribution during this life, to get to get the vengeance repaid right now. Our 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 vengeance comes not from us, but when the Lord pours out his wrath. Lord willing, there are very few who have to experience that. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coal of fire on his head. Now, here's one of those things that I want you to understand about that coal of fire. When you read about the coal of fire, you should immediately take you to the book of Isaiah. When Isaiah stood before the Lord in, 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 in his kingdom and he said, Lord, 
I, I should not worthy to be here. I'm a man of unclean lips. And you remember an angel took a coal from underneath the, the altar and flew and touched the lips to clean them. See, the heaps of coal on their head is not so that we can go, oh, burn you. I win. See? No. It's so that they might get cleansed. They might come to repentance. So they might know the Lord Jesus Christ. And then be not, here's the big one, and I think it's kind of almost the exclamation point at the end of this passage. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. There are so many of us, I think, we don't recognize it. We think what we're doing is good, but we're over, honestly being overcome with evil. When we would seek to avenge ourselves, when we would seek to live, not live peaceably with all men, when we think uh, ill of other people, when we, when, when, when we, when we, when we would um, uh, recompense evil to men, uh, for the, for, to, the problem is that we're not honestly overcoming evil. We're becoming a part of evil. We need to overcome evil with good. Looking for an example of this, go back and read the story of our Lord before his accusers and before Pilate to understand what that might look like. I love you. We love you. God loves you. And God's got this.